I'm not happy every day. Listen, everybody loves a great, you know, sexual relationship. Honestly, if a man gives you a ring, it's yours. Whatever rule that says that if you give it, that if you break up, it's his back. No. So I go on this date. He comes highly recommended by a woman, blah, blah, blah. All men do. It's a big con game. And unfortunately, I experienced that, the con as well. Your abuser is because your mother was embarrassed to say you were an addict. So she put you in a holdover and you were attacked there. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Law of Attraction Secrets podcast. I'm here in the studio today with someone we have just found out we're probably cousins and related. I am so excited because you guys get to meet somebody you already know from TV, probably know from Mob Wives. You've probably seen her somewhere online. She's uber famous, uber cool, the most amazing mother, the most amazing matriarch in her family. And I've just found out the most wonderful secrets and all kinds of crazy things that we're probably going to talk about on the show. And she's super spiritual. So welcome to the show, uh, Renee Graziano. Thank you, cousin. I know, isn't that amazing? You know what? Like I said, it doesn't make, blood doesn't make your family. Family makes your family. You're right. So you're part of mine. Oh. And if anybody heard that here at Loud and Clear, do not mess with her. I love you. That means the world. Because <laughs> I was over here with no family. So having someone and listening to the way that you look after your family, like you have children. I couldn't believe you said you had grandkids because you look genuinely no older than 35, 36. Thank I you. was shell shocked. But like you just, you know, matriarch, you know, family's everything to you, right? Family is everything and more. I grew up with, um, I'm one of uh, three girls. Middle child syndrome all day long, but I was only blessed with one son. And I thank God for that because I didn't have a daughter. <laughs> However, wow, my, my first was a son too. Ooh. I would have quit if it was a girl. But then my son has one son and three daughters. Wow. So I did get it back. I got it back. Wow. So yes. do you love it? Is it so nice with all the girls it's, now? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a boy mom. Right. I'm a boy mom. Yeah. It's so hard to play with the girls. They're like, do my hair. I'm like, no, we go to the salon for that. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Paint my nails. What do you think I look like? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, here's money. Here's money. Yes. You know, um, I love, I love my family yeah. more than anything. And, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I'll die for my family. No, I probably would be the one that would literally wow. lay down and die. Wow, wow, that is so strong. Yeah. And so they're all here with you? No, so I have no family here either. No! Yes. Where did you grow up? I'm I'm from the East Coast. I'm from New York. Of course she was. So yes. You, yeah. Okay. So I moved so. out here. Uh, Lamar Odom had uh, asked me to come out like four months ago for my sobriety, and I did just that. Congratulations. Thank you. We're coming up on five months. Congratulations. Lamar, thank you. Lamar's a very dear friend. Um, so is his PR, Gina Rodriguez, who I love to death. But I don't have family here. You know, my manager, Chris, I have here, yeah. but I don't have blood flam do they, family. Do they fly out or you fly see them? I flew them out for the first time, the first time they've ever even been on a plane. And we went to Disney and got rained out, but they charged me $1,000 to I... Disney. Anyway, I'm like, where is my father? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where's Evan? my dad? Let's go there for a sec, because obviously sure. for anyone who's new to this, this is really interesting because you have the most amazing story of who you are, where it started, where it came from. We were tapping into this before the show. So you are the daughter of, and over to you. Anthony Graziano, consigliere of the Bonanno crime family. May he rest in peace, finally rest in peace. Wow. Uh, an amazing man with even more of an extraordinary story. My father had no higher than a seventh grade education. Wow. Um, he was shipped away in the middle of the night because his mother's boyfriend was molesting his sisters and he suddenly died in an electrical fire. Well, needless to say, my father was off to New York at the age of 11 or 12 oh. with these two little cowboy guns. I wish they would have left those behind. It kind of shaped him yeah. for life. Um, now, the truth is, no one knows what happened. But if I know my father, 
Yeah. He did what he was supposed to do, as any father should do for their children. Absolutely. But my father was molded at a very, very young age. Um, he also saved a family out of a burning building and a young girl that was drowning in a Prospect <gasps> Park with his best friend, Ronnie Kaluji, who is also now in heaven. Yeah, my father was like a, he wanted to give everything away. And I think that's where I get it from. Yes. And he never saved for himself. I mean, don't get me wrong. We grew up fancy cars, mansions, all that extra stuff. But when push came to shove, my father made sure you ate before he did. Wow. What a man. I believe so. I believe that's what a man is. Unlike my son's father, you know, who would take the, the money from his wife, ex-wife. I See, this is what really puzzles me about men. Are you a real fucking man? Are you going to stand up? and be in your masculine energy and look after your wife and be an inspiration to the world? Or are you going to just rely on her and sit back, smoke weed and chill all day? Well, nowadays, that's all men do. It's a big con game. And unfortunately, I experienced that the con yeah. as well. But the men that are like, hey, babe, pick this up for me. No, get up and pick it up yourself. Yeah. Like, I'm not used to what is out there mm -hmm. so hence why i'm single for so long and even when i tr tried to date again back in 21 i came across myself a con man now don't get me wrong i love an ex-con but not a con man <laughs> you know what i mean and he was out to get money out to get my business contacts and then the last guy i dated ha! he was not just dating me but he was dating a man no no, babe. I should probably grab that water. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. We'll take a water shot. What I'm also surprised. Yeah. Are you? Seven and a half years. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank so you, my love. Is. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. if people are like, oh, you know, it's just, it's a choice. Let me tell you, like, the fact that we do that, we decide I am going to, I'm going to protect myself and mm -hmm. I'm going to feel good. I'm going to protect my temple. You're glowing. Thank you. Right, you glow. And I can now I know why. Yeah. Because people that drink, it, it's a different look. It, it is and a different. And the rest of it, you Yes, know? it is. It is. I actually was never a drinker. Uh, I would say pill popper and I liked cocaine. Yeah, yeah, same. That was my you drug of choice. I couldn't. Too. I was never a drinker. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't get me wrong. I always had the champagne in my hand, but it was not my thing. It was not my thing. To this day, I don't even care. To, if I picked up a drink, I'd put it down. Like, it never was anything. For me, it was cocaine, definitely. And then after my sexual assault, it became um, a whole lot of Xanax. Oh, yeah, you hear that a lot. Mm -hmm. Particularly, you know, it's it's so interesting how an addiction, we had a lady on talking about how her son died from addiction and it's not something that's targeted enough. She has a whole charity on it now. She created it's so beautiful. It's it's one of those things that is overlooked. And I wish there was more out there, more knowledge for people, you know, because we don't know. We don't know, but that is part of my prerogative in life is to let it be known. So wow. by me sharing that Renee Graziano daughter of consigliere crime boss was given a wrong drug and OD'd off fentanyl and was dead and left for dead and uh, intubated for three days, had to learn how to walk. Yeah. Okay. It's time. I, I have the voice. Yes. So now maybe more people will pay attention. There we go. And that's why you've been given the gift of fame because you. you're meant to share this amazing I message. So. People who are famous don't understand. So people who are in the public eye, I can also speak from this. We have to use our platform to share great things. Like you are starting, your memoir, we're gonna go into yes. in a second, your app, the things you're doing in the world that make people feel good. You know, all the beautiful work that you're doing, like you just said, this is what, you know, you're given that that beautiful platform of fame, cool. For you, it's just fun. It's like who you are now, what you do with it is like, that's the real truth. Sure is. And and looking at it now, I call it North Star status. Mm. Because everybody is a star. Some just shine brighter. Yes, boo. I love huh. that. And I, I love think that God quote. said, okay, here, you're going to go through hell. Let me let you shine brighter. Right. And, and I do. And, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, she's conceited. No, I'm not. I am thoroughly convinced that everything that I've been through was not just by accident, mm. uh, osmosis, none of that. God said, that is yours. 
walk with it, talk with it, learn it, earn it, and give it back. God, I couldn't love that more. Thank you, you got it, and you and you can tell that the minute you walk in the room, it's like wow your energy your presence like you're a beautiful soul you know you can feel that but that's because you're close to god you it's know my best friend now, and when you said that earlier i was like wait who the hell would name themselves god <laughs> sorry that was like blasphemy in a sentence but like i was shocked but you then i understood what you meant yeah what, what does that mean to you like this is obviously mm -hmm. a spiritual show so so god is loving caring and compassionate and i think there is a God inside of each one of us. Yes. And it's not just, listen, everybody loves the shine and the fame, but it's like when you go home, you know, there's a song by Mary Mary, uh, and she says, um, nobody knows when she gets behind closed doors, man, she hits the, she hits the knee, she hits her knees. It's like this, everybody thinks you're something, but when you go behind those closed doors and you hit your knees, that's your God. Wow. That's that's the God in you. And and the name of the song is in, It's the God in Me. How do you pray? Uh, all day all long. Day? Like uh, in your head, uh, walking along or on a your A lot of the time I your... pray in my head, but uh, every night uh, it's the Owl Father, the Hail Mary, the yep. St. Michael prayer. And then I have my list of please look over, A, yep. B, and C. Um, every morning it is, hey, Dad, I made it. Yeah. Um, Take God for a walk and talk. It's like a gangster, you know, joke with, with him. He used to grab you by the back and take you for a walk and wow. talk. Again, our Father, Hail Mary. And throughout the day, I probably say the St. Michael prayer more times than I had planned on it when I'm seeing what's happening in this world. Wow. Um, the evil that is, you know, coming forth. And I'm, you know, it might be a little too much for some people, but as a light worker, because I do you believe are, that yeah. I am. You know, in the Bible, it states that in 2032, all the devils must, you know, show their face because that's the deal that was made. And I don't even think we have to wait to 2032. I don't think we do. I think they're already revealing them. Let's go then. Yeah, let's no. get it over with. Yeah, let's Walk get it up. Yeah, please just bring them out. We want them to come, like sh put them on a pedestal exactly. so they can crash exactly. after and exactly. see them. Because it's killing our children. I know. I and know. it's not, you know, people saying, what is she talking about? Okay, what I'm talking about is the evil entities that be. Okay, it doesn't mean that they have to have horns. It obviously means Hollywood. It obviously means the music industry. It obviously means people in the television. Yes. It obviously could be your next door neighbor. It's yeah. the evil entities that uh -huh, be. Uh -huh. The ones that don't want others to be happy and shine. I and know. for me, that's kind of like, I was bullied as a child terribly, terribly. Uh, I was told how ugly I was. I'm never going to be anything. And then it continued on to my relationship with my son's father. You're fat, you're ugly, your ass is flat. So I got my ass done. So I did this. So I, I died to get that BBL, literally flatlined on the table, got MRSA through my what? whole body. Oh, yeah, I got MRSA through my whole body. Only to have that same man come back and basically catfish me, telling me he loves me, but he put a wire in my watch so he could tape conversations. So someone said to me, well, is that catfished? Well, if it isn't, I don't know what catfished is. Just because you know the person doesn't mean they don't catfish you. Holy shit. That is crazy. I'm sorry to hear what you, but you know what? Look at you now. Because no, don't apologize. If Some other woman gets to hear this and say, oh, you need to get out tonight. Oh, you know what? I'm changing my phone number now. Right. So it is what it is. And also, from the experiences we've been through, and we've both been through some crazy stuff in our lives, maybe it's a Graziano thing. Oh, sweetheart, is it ever. Oh, my God. But we're blessed with that. We're so blessed because we go through that trauma so that we can come out the other side. The only reason that we go through pain, pain hits you, whether it's a red light symbol going physical, emotional, mental, or spiritual to say, honey, you are going in the wrong direction. Correct. So we're going in the wrong direction. And here we are on the other side as the rebirth us and are able to help our family, our friends, our community and the world. Do you know my name, Renee, means rebirth? It does. Oh, I yeah. just said that. No way. It means reborn. What does Graziano actually mean? Queens. No, I don't know. Well, yeah, can um, we just stick with that? Yeah. Well, I know the beginning. Grazie means thank, thank you. you. So thank I you. Thank you for being just, queen. Right. I just think, <laughs> I know, I just assumed it was thank you. It's just a it is, it just means means Thank you for gratitude. being beautiful. Oh, love, thank you for being alive. Do you Amen. believe in the law of attraction? 
you know what? Everyone tells me to read it. And I'm like, you know, I really can't stand reading. Meanwhile, I wrote three books. I know. So that's interesting. You're working on books. Wait, we're going to go there in a second. Okay, so talk to me about the law of attraction. All right, okay. So it's irrelevant of the word. It's just like a term, okay? Okay. So the law of attraction means, whether you know it or not, it's one of the laws of the universe of attraction, which means, like the law of polarity, north and south, up and down, the opposites, right? The law of attraction means you attract to you what you are. You attract to you what you think about. You attract to you essentially everything you desire, negative or positive, Mm -hmm. everything you think about, dwell on. So you attract like a magnet, right? So if I'm, I'm so depressed, I'm never going to get through this. Well, guess what? Life will deliver you more situations of I'm never going to get through this. Life is so hard. I do believe that. Right? Yes. But when... You're on the other side of it and you're like, I'm magnificent. I'm abundant. I'm worthy. I'm magnetic. I can do this. I am going to have an amazing person in my life, even though I went through that. I am going to have children if I went through that. I am, Right? Now you start to see a different reality. You start to see the best people around you. You start to feel events and people and places that come into your life, which is the attraction, the law of attraction, which is completely different to what you, you know, once desired. Well, I'll tell you this. One, that conversation you and I were having off camera. Yes. You answered it for yourself. I am. I Everything that you're having is for a reason. Yes. That's yours. Yes. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I am. So you get it. See, you understand it. So that's what I mean. So it's just a term. It's a term that you can turn into your reality. Right. So I definitely get that I have attracted shit. That's why I've gotten shit. Um. And now I don't choose to actually attract anything right now. So I'm in a in a state of keep it over there. Yeah, love that. Just uh yeah, from over there. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying I don't want to date. I long to date. Yeah. I do. I long to date. Matter of fact, I went on a date. Oh my god, funny story. Yeah. Okay. Cause I don't date. Right. Literally. Like I go on my day. I'm like, when we get married, like I'm like, I move fast. I got engaged a month and a month and 19 days after I met the devil anyway. But so I go on this date. He comes highly recommended by a woman, blah, blah, blah. She's from England. You probably know each other. I'll tell you afterwards. We, he flies me first class. We go to where we, we started. You, he flies you to the UK? No, he flies me to, we started in New Orleans. From New Orleans, we were going to go to Mississippi. From Mississippi, we were going to go to his uh, purchasing his new house in um, I love that, taking Montana. you on a date to buy yeah. the new house. Okay, here's how that happened. <laughs> yeah, here's how that happened. So he lied about his age. He said he was 64, he was 69. He would not stop touching me. Now- I I noticed it was when men were around. Like, he always had to have his hands on me. That's very uncomfortable yeah, for me. Yeah. And being a rape victim, oh, I God. don't like you touching me. Yeah. You, I have to invite you to yes, touch me. Yes. And it was always like, grabby, grabby, grabby. Long story short, the next, let alone we went to sleep, I had to sleep in the other bed because <gasps> old man couldn't hold his his gas. Yep, I said it. There was this, there's a book, The Gas We Passed... From our ass is free at last. No, it was all over the freaking room. Oh my god! Oh my die. god! Die! Die! See how to flagellant just... old fucker. <laughs> anyway, we wake up, we go downstairs, and I said, he goes, I gotta go. I go to the bathroom again. He goes, No, my ex girlfriend's mother had a stroke, and I gotta go. I go, Is she dead? He goes, No, I gotta go. I got. I said, Are you out of your fucking mind? You're 70. What kind of games are you playing? He's like, well, I lived with her for three years. I said, okay, listen, this is how it works. Leave your credit card because I'm going to enjoy my day of beauty at the spa. You can book my ticket back. Bye. Nice. And I blocked him. Oh, my God. And everyone in the Ritz Carlton thinks me. Wow. That's a crazy fucking story. After that, I'm done. So now you have to attract a completely different thing when you are ready. So we say we attract what we are. And you are amazing. Like looking at your character, your personality, your abundance. So when you're ready, you'll attract a 10 because you're playing at a 10, right? So we have to be 
our dream partner. So that's what we attract to us. And then you're super fast at the rest of it, the getting married shit. So it's easy for you. So this right. is so okay. fun. This so is I have to be a 10 at all times. Yes, in every way. So you have to write a list. I want ambitious, loving, caring, generous, family man, okay. young, all your things, doesn't pass gas in front of me. Doesn't like, get high. Doesn't, doesn't get Doesn't drink. High. Doesn't, yes. Yeah, there's a lot. Right. I'm, my list is going to be detailed. And then you go out of 10 what you are. Okay, sobriety, 10. This, 10. Ambitious 10. Be honest. Oh, shit. I'm a four on this. Right. Ooh. Okay. It's only for you and God. You're looking at it alone. So you're like, okay, let me work on that. Okay. So I need to raise my four to a 10 because now I don't attract that four anymore. Why do I keep attracting douchebags? Not for you now. I'm talking about the, anybody no, watching. It's okay. So I we attract them. Right. So we, but that's because inside of us somewhere, we don't feel worthy. Worthy. Somewhere Absolutely. deep down, we don't feel worthy. Yep. My mom, when she left my dad and she had five, those five of us, she was like, I'm never going to meet anybody again. She was like 50 at the time, whatever. She was like, how am I going to meet somebody? And I was like, you will. She was like, I have really no idea how. And I was like, mom, what do you mean? Of course you will. So I, I even knew back then what she should do. And I showed her and she met the love of her life and they're married to this day. Yes. So the point is you can easily attract it. It doesn't matter where you are in like 50, 60, 70. Correct. It's about how you feel, feel on the inside. 100%. Yeah. And that to me is what the law of attraction is. The feeling, your thoughts become your feelings. feelings. Your feelings become, become your, your actions, actions and your actions are who you so are. So it's the same as recovery, your thinking, attitudes, and behavior. Yes, yep. exactly the that's same. The, that's the true definition recovery. Recovery is exactly this, by exactly. the way. Exactly. It's the, I just, the quote. Well, then I have a chance because yeah. I just started fresh again. So I'm going to take it slow. Oh, you're going to be amazing. You're going to be you. amazing. So spirituality is a big part of your life. God, the work. Do you have any, so this is interesting because the word manifesting was born from this law of attraction. The word manifesting is like the birth from from what the law of attraction is because you manifest into your life. So do you have like a morning ritual or you told me a little bit already, but do you have any rituals you do for mm. manifesting or is it just innate? Like think about the show. When you got the show, what did you do to get it? Or think about another big achievement in your life. I what? pray. You pray. I Prayer for me is every single thing. But now that you're talking about this, I'm going to have to start writing it down. Like mm. every morning, can you imagine a life where you effortlessly magnetize your dreams to you? Financial success, the love of your life, the family of your dreams, and everything you've ever dreamed of at your fingertips. With my approach to manifesting, I have a practical method where you use the power of your creative words. It's called scripting. We write in the past tense in a certain way to attract all our desires to us. I've done this. I met my husband in three weeks doing this. I help myself heal twice. I help myself get rid of a rash on my body. I have helped myself to elevate myself and get myself out there to so many people. I've changed my bank account number. I've added two zeros onto it. I have created abundance like I could never dream of. The most beautiful homes around the world. And you can do this too, like so many of my clients are currently doing right now. The success stories speak for themselves. I want to show you how to do it. This is for somebody who is ready though. Don't even bother coming unless you are ready to transform your life. If you feel like, oh, I'm on the fence. I don't know. None of this shit really works. Then baby, it doesn't work. It doesn't work for you. This works for somebody who says, I'm ready. I'm ready to try something else. Try using the power of my words. I want to learn in a curriculum. I want to be in a group with other like-minded individuals and I want to win. This is for entrepreneurs who are ready to go to the next level or maybe get out of corporate America and go to the entrepreneurship world. If you're ready, come and join us inside the Scripting Society and I'll see you there. If I'm not happy every day. Okay, no I don't know anybody that is, but when you're in recovery and new in recovery, you're really unhappy. And right now, I was just thrown like 18 hard balls Oof. all at once. And I'm like, call my sister, what do I do? She's yeah. like, figure it out. I'm like, but I don't understand. Yeah. I'm such a good person. She goes, it has nothing to do with you being a good person. Life on life's term, get up. I know. And you know what? I found myself today in bed till I got here. And I was like, I can't wear makeup today. It's one of those days where I can't wear makeup. Um, and that's a that's a thing with me. It's like if I'm not feeling that good, I I won't wear makeup. 
Let it be known that I don't need makeup. <laughs> no, you're right. This is like you're so beautiful Thank without you. it. Thank you. But there, you know what? You're you got to get up no matter what. No yes. matter what. Yes. No matter how hard you got hit, or if all eighteen balls hit you at the same damn time, I'm sure some of them missed. But at the end of the day, I have to put the next foot forward. You do, and that's all we can do every yeah. day. The the next foot. The next foot, one step at a time. Better one percent every day. Yeah. Get better one percent every day. One step, and then that one step, all of a sudden, you've reached the top of the mountain. Yep. You didn't even know. And it's nice. Look, we met. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's a sisterhood. There's definitely family here. I know. I love. But that. it's the fact that you uh, you did change my whole thought process for today because I was feeling a little glum and I was like you know what I'm just gonna go stay in a hotel and go get massages and order shishito peppers that's like my thing oh I, I love and that. I opened up my pocketbook I got a giant pickle in my pocket I know I was like she's got that I'm gonna <laughs> eat on TikTok I love um, it but you know what I sometimes find myself not giving me enough I I got my uh bath salts i got my soak and you know what it's gonna just be about me that's it i don't need nobody next to me to tell me anything or to do anything i'm mm, good mm, mm. and i think that's another thing for me you know and i speak very freely being 54 i started menopause at 44 so i had to have Early. a full hysterectomy no way yeah full <laughs> full hysterectomy and most women get to go home that day nine days later Everything went haywire. Yeah. So it's like menopause for me means men on pause. Mm, Period. Never heard that. I know. I did. Wow. I, that I like that. Well done. You should do a whole, another book on mm -hmm. that. Men on I'm pause. Course. Because it, it's like, I know you're going to be there when I get back. But do I want you when I get back? Mm. So it, it's it's something about me and it has nothing to do with sex. It has everything to do with me, my sexual, me being like what is necessary, what is unnecessary, what what are you gonna weigh out the good with the bad? You know, listen, everybody loves a great, you know, sexual relationship. Honestly, right now I'd put that like halfway down the mark and take a man that's way more loyal and loving and considerate and honest than, you know, the fuck boy status. Cause 100% agree. It's like, oh. Ugh, we're so bored of that. You like, want someone uh, who's kind uh, and loving. Cause you roll over already, I'm dying. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. Yeah, I want yeah. I want a partner. Yes. I want a grandpa. Life with. I want a grandpa. You, there we go. And you can have a young grandpa. Yeah. He could be in his like 50s, 60s. Yeah. Even 40s. Mm, Too young? No, I would say 50s. can't be less than 48. Not perfect. Yeah. Love that for you. Mm -hmm. Love that for you. Not older than 65. Okay. Because I'm very young at heart. No, you're super young at heart. Oh, oh I was, no, I'm a child. I love that about <laughs> you. I love that about you. But that's what keeps you so bubbly and fun and cool Thank and you. like, Keeps she is my this. sister, Jennifer. You're not. <laughs> oh my God, Jennifer's coming on the show soon. I can't wait. She's That's gonna, gonna tell be... you, Renee's not my sister. You are. <laughs> oh my God, you lot are so funny. You're uh, such a cool family, though. Thank you. Okay, your stories are wild. So on the show, you said you on Mob Wives, you got married and divorced and back together. Okay, so the day I got married, I didn't want to marry him. I knew something that day more than ever. Um, but my father said, I spent 250000 get down the fucking aisle, you'll get divorced tomorrow. Ten years later, I left. Why did I leave? Well, aside from all the beatings, um, oh, he geez. is, when I say the word abuse, essay, um, he's my R, uh, mentally, physically, emotionally, Everything. Did your dad know that no. you were being? Yeah, I was gonna say. I should have told, but in my brain and because of my relationship with God, I felt that I would be creating a sin, mm -hmm. and that my father would go to jail, and it'd be my fault. Right. And the death would be my fault. Right. And everything, and God forbid. That's how I thought, literally. Um, and kudos to Renee for having a really good, good heart. But shame on Renee for not protecting herself and saving herself mm. 
But again, it goes down to I was worthless. Mm -hmm. When you're being told on an everyday basis, you're ugly, you're ugly, you're fat, you're this, you're that, do that to yourself, do that. Being compared to strippers. He had this girlfriend, her name was Raven. Um, she was a stripper. She worked for my father. He would compare me to her. While you were together. Yeah, she's a crackhead. How are you comparing me to a crackhead? It's so sad. And mm. and and, and, you're a mother, and I'm like... stating facts, mind you. Um I'm a mom and he would lead, he would give her my car. I could I lost four pounds uh I'm sorry, twenty four pounds in my fifth twenty five pounds in my fourth month, my body shut down completely. Completely, I almost had a massive heart attack. No potassium in my body when they rushed me in. I went through hell. Literally went through hell, so I should get a bypass if there is hell. <laughs> um, and the beatings continued. And then one day he gave me a really bad beating in front of my son. And AJ was maybe four and a half. And his face was pressed on those little banisters, and his eyes never left mine. And I, he dragged me down the back of the, by the back of my hair down the stairs. And I just looked at him, and I was like, "I gotta get out." I let, I got up, cleaned myself off, went to church, and there was a piece of paper that said, "After the long dark storm, there will be light." Oof. And that's actually the tattoo I'm having done next week on my back. Oh my gosh! I left. Never looked back. And I really couldn't have because he was engaged to somebody else and she was pregnant. <laughs> Wait, so you were with someone who was engaged to somebody? I was married to the man who got engaged. How can you be engaged when you're married? I don't know. Like you'd in to, a relationship. You'd have to take that up with him. I don't know. Long story short, he went to jail. He came back and I went back on him for a little while. Then he had another girlfriend, whatever. Mob wives came. I'm on my deathbed. He brings me this... Rolex watch, this one watch that I didn't have, and he gives it to me, and in my crazy brain, I'm like, oh, I had it to die in order for him to love me. No, that was the only way he was gonna entrap me. Put a wire in the watch, gave it to me, and then he taped every phone, every single conversation. Uh, on November 21st, 2011, I found out that he uh, was a federal law informant. My father, who had just come home from doing 12 years, was once again gone, ripped out from me, and did another three years where he came home a year later and then got dementia and passed. I'm so sorry. No, don't be. And you and your dad were super close. My father uh, and I are still close. I love just not on the same planet. And do you speak to him through mediums or anything? I don't have to speak to you him. You can just do it I, yourself? Yeah. I know he's there. Wow. I, need a, I don't need an answer. Yeah. yeah. I know my father's around. Wow. Trust me. I know. Certain things will happen to me. I'll yeah. be like. Yeah. Or a sign, a symbol. Mm, things like that do you have? cardinals then? everywhere. For sure. Just, I know my father's around. Wow. And, you know, I went a little crazy for a while. I was like, oh, I have to talk to him. You don't want to be talked to. He's good. He's he's happy where he is. You have to write a book. And on that note, you are writing yes, a book. The I, Memoirs of Renee Graziano. Memoir, the Memoir. Um, okay, tell me about it. The Memoir where it's a toss between I am my father's daughter or once upon a mob wife. I would like to do a dual book, front and back. Love that. Ooh. With both titles. Well, you know what you could do, I think is what you're saying. And we're talking the same language. The title on one side, and if you flip it upside down. It's me. It's the other title on the back. Correct. So they, they go inwards, but half the writing is, is upside down on one side. Just like me, dyslexics. Yeah. Yeah, and it tells the story of who I was and who I am. Wow. Yo, that's a very unique book. I've never seen a book with two books. Mm -hmm. In one. Mm -hmm. That's what I want. You me. should do it. I've never, you should. Oh, I'm so excited for your book. Thank you. You know, it's so interesting how many guests we have Ryan Garcia sitting right there, a friend of mine last week. And he said, before he like disappeared, and he said, but he's back, thank God. Amen. And safe. And he said, I want to write a book. You got to help me. And people seem to sit on that chair and tell me about the book, and I help them to manifest it physically in this world through various different things and then help them to go bestseller. So it's really interesting. I do it for a lot of my clients as well. We'll talk afterwards about it. We this. will, we will, I, we will. Yeah. Cause that I need help with. Girl, I, God, I literally coach people on the book cause mine's mm -hmm. a 
Twice, USA Today, New, uh, yeah, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all the bestsellers. So it's like you can do this too, and you're a queen. Like God, you. But you're the reason I know that your book. I wish it was out now. When it's out, you're going to come on again and promote it because our audience is going to absolutely love it. Your story is so powerful. It's heavy. It's so amazing. I'll need like a six month like vacation. Yeah. Yeah. It's very heavy. I know. Um, and I would say, and this is the God's honest truth. After I write certain things, I would, would like to be like checked in for a, a little while. Cause there are certain things in there that are still very painful. Wow. And I'm not saying I don't trust myself. I'm just saying I don't trust a lot of things around me. Yeah. So I'd rather be secluded in peace mm. than in the world of chaos. Mm. Just if it's a week it. uh, in Hawaii or, mm -hmm. but it's something that I'd have to do with one or two people that I love and trust. Hundred percent. But I know it's going to happen because it's very heavy to talk about. I mean, any woman could sit here and talk about rape and not flinch. I'm going to flinch and cry, and I'm probably going to hate the person all over again. As much work as I've done, it's never over. No. You know, so. I, was the, I went through, I'm a victim of rape too, and I didn't know twice, and I didn't mm. know that one of them was by a pedophile. So it's just like, I didn't know. And the second one, again, was very similar. I was super young, but of age just but i thought it was my fault so we always think it is i, I thought i i it was, i gave permission in some way i must have given that symbol it's such a it's such a sensitive topic and my heart goes out for anyone who's you know yeah especially if, if your uh, abuser is your husband or if your abuser is because your mother was embarrassed to say you were an addict so she put you in a holdover and you were attacked there is your mother still around? Yeah. She's still here. She is 79. You speak to her? Yeah, she'll be 80 in May. So you found peace? I'll never find peace with that. That's just something with I've her... had to accept. Yeah, same, accept. I've had to accept it. She didn't mean me any harm at all. The harm was caused because I OD'd. So if I right. didn't OD, right. I would have never been there. So it's right. not her fault. Yes. She did the best she could as a mom, just not educated enough, which brings us back to we need to educate people more. Oh, she's, it's not that she's crazy. She's suffering from something. Let's not put her there. Let's put her here mm. where she's safe. Mm -hmm. Safe so, is a very important word. Well, safe is ever. That's why I don't date too. I know. Can but, I imagine? <laughs> if I, if... You're with me, you're safe. And if I'm with you and I ain't safe, we gotta we have a big problem. No, completely. Yeah, I'm coming for your mother. Oh my gosh. And her mother. So who are the closest people to you now? Who's like the mm. closest people around you? Uh so my sister Jennifer and I just made up after a year and a half. She stopped talking to me because of my addiction. She's older or younger? Younger. She had She's to do boss. that in order to help you to if come you think around. so. But I also don't know the situation. Uh, I don't agree with that. So therefore, I can't. I can't even judge. I don't think tough love is cool. Yeah, you see, I know. I'm, I don't think so because I think sometimes. Did it help you get to sobriety or no? No, I was sick for a year and a half Oof. longer. What I personally think is when there is a sibling who loves another, that sibling might say, and this is just me, put it this way. If my sister Jennifer was me and she was going through what I did, I would go with her. I'd stop my life for her. Now, is that fair? Does it sound reasonable? No, it doesn't. Should my son stop taking care of his four children to take care of his mother? No. But when you love somebody, you just don't hang them out to dry as well. So well, when I OD'd, no one in my family came. No one showed up. Um, Carla Fasciola from Mob Wives, she was there, but I was intubated, so I didn't even know. My girlfriend Danielle showed up, and my cousin Erica was called. I don't remember any of it because I was intubated. Um, do I think that was right? Mm, nope. But if I continue to think about that, I won't be present. So the thing for me is, 
my present is a present. Wow, I love that. I uh, One of my siblings in particular, I'm the oldest of five, she really neglected me during a hard time in my life and made the other siblings feel that they had to as well. And I've forgiven her in my heart now, but I was going through a, my own version of mm -hmm. what I was going through and they didn't respect what I did. And it was so hard to be left out in the cold. So I can really relate to you on that. It's tough. You know what? But sometimes when you're left out in the cold, it's not them that comes to warm you. That's where your spirituality comes from. Absolutely. That's where God comes from. You know, when you're left in the dark and you can't see, how is it possible there's always a light? Did you, oh gosh, that's so beautiful. Did you find the light? Did you see God it? It's my light, always has been. I I've, there's not a day, hour, minute that I don't know he's there. Wow. And I'm telling you, I have walked through hell in the dark, but I knew there was a light. And I didn't see it, but I knew it was no, there. It's about having unwavering faith. Yes, blind no, faith. Yes, and knowing no matter what you go through, there is light at the end mm -hmm. of the tunnel. It feels pitch black, but I assure you, spring will always come. Yep. Every time. Mm -hmm. When we feel we're at our lowest, I was in hundreds of thousands of debt. I was a single mom. I was alone and suffering, overcoming an illness. I, you couldn't get lower. Physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, the red light symbol was there. I got it. I knew I had to do a U-turn somehow. That shattered the old version of me. That shattered the version of me that I was so that the new version of me could be born. Yeah. And I found the light. I saw it every day. I was like, oh, there's a glimmer of light. And it would only last for 30 seconds a day, but it was there. Yeah. It was there. And I was like, God, I know you're there. And they're like, no. I'm gone again, but it didn't matter. I saw it. Yes. And every day I worked on extending, expanding. Because the that light, light wasn't gone, it was in you. Amen. And that's where it began to grow. Amen. You know, and that's what it more or less boils down to. Either you're going to, you know, I had um, a therapist. Her name was Renee. And As she, well. Yeah. Oh, sh and she was a real riot. Um, <laughs> real riot. <clears throat> she said, So what? Now what? And I'd be like, bitch, what do you mean? She'd be like, so what? Now what? And she would say it and say it. And I was like, so what? Now what? Okay, so what? Now what? Now I could lay down a door and now I could walk out of that room and make everybody look. Wow. And that's what I did. I constantly do it. You know, with having five ODs, two car accidents that I shouldn't have lived from, dying on an operating table, I am on my ninth life. Um, and for me, it's like, so what? Now what? Look at my ass. Bye. Wow. Bye. Kiss it on the way out. Do you use that saying now? So what? Now what? Yeah. yeah. It's not funny. I, I, it's really something I, I say to myself, like, because I get very frustrated, very frustrated, like everything like that today. It was just like. Oh my God, what am I going to do? And I could have laid in that bed all day and I said, ah, I think I'll go stay at the hotel. Ah, book me a massage. Mm. So what? Now what? Now yeah. I'll be nice and glistening. I love that. So you found a way. I, I have to do. make a way. Have to. You know, God usually does it for me. Yeah. And hence why I was able to book where I was staying and everything else. But all I ask for is, is a loyalty mm. and that a soulmate. And it doesn't mean a, in a form of a man. A soulmate, like I have a girlfriend, Danielle. She's one of my favorite people on earth. I have uh, a girlfriend, Bali, whose husband committed suicide that we are all devastated over. I think that's really when I started to get sober. Like uh, he died the end of October, November 2nd, I went in. Um, oh, wow. Lee Marie, like Christina, uh, Jessica, Antonia, and they're solid women. And I'm good. It's like, I'll take a little ha, huh, a little ha. Huh, I'll create that mm -hmm. that soulmate that mm -hmm. I don't need from mm -hmm. the man. Don't get me wrong. It'd be nice to have somebody pick my checkup mm -hmm. aside from me. I know. 
But then again, my checks have been picked up all my life from mm -hmm. my father. So maybe it's my turn to pick up a check. Interesting. See, what do you believe? Let's let's talk about that for a moment. What do you believe about relationships? I know we spoke about it earlier. You, you know, the man should 50, be... 50, the, the, no, 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 no. Oh, Here we go. Okay. This is so funny. Like I once said... I don't believe in 50 50. And then I realized at the time I was in a relationship where I was funding the whole thing. Yeah. So, what do you mean you don't like? I, I don't even do 50 50. Well, all of a sudden I was doing 100%. Like, right. whoa. Women, I believe, here's my, my, my thing today. I believe in today's world, the woman should show up with an amazing plateau. That does not mean she has to have millions in the bank. It means I work hard and I don't need you. So, I can buy myself this. You can do the rest, but I can absolutely stand up for myself and do whatever I need. Correct. I believe that if that check is 5000 and he doesn't pick it up, you can. 100%. I Not love saying that. that you should. Yes, but you can. But you can. I love that. Oh, I love that. A lot of girls, they think, no, the man should do it all. No, sweetie. You gotta I do believe that... The man, okay, if a man gives you a ring, it's yours, whatever rule that says that if you give it, that if you break up, it's his back. No. No, it's yours. All your pain, suffering, and tears, that's part of the ring. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do I believe that when buying a house, a man should buy it? I believe a woman should put something into that house so we can't say, I did this, that, and a third, and make sure it's always in your name. Um, I believe that a woman should be spoiled. But I also believe that a man should be spoiled in maybe not monetarily things, but cook, clean, iron the clothes, you know, warm his bath, hot meal, make sure that he doesn't ever have to go outside of the relationship. Absolutely. I think there's a give and take with everything. If I got a lot of money today and I could buy us A, B, and C and he couldn't, I'll buy us A, B, and C because you've been good to me. I love that. I love that. Right but there. if I have all that money and you're not good to me, what I will buy you is a one-way ticket out. Mm. And that's it. How do you cut off when you need to? Oh, yeah, you're asking the wrong one. Um, Why? Because you I never... I don't date. That's, I don't, no, I'm the worst. I've been taken advantage of so death. Like, I lost everything financially. Gosh. Everything. Friends. I had a friend rob every single thing I own. Pocketbook, shoes, eyeglasses. I walked into treatment with nothing. In November, nothing, nothing. She robbed my eyeglasses. I couldn't see. What? Thief. But look at you now, how exactly. strong you are. She, she texted the other day, she's like, are you in treatment? I go, what do you want? She's like, I thought you might want some of your stuff. I mean, oh, you mean the stuff you robbed of my father's that was left to me, my rosary beads, my Bible and everything else? I said, do me a favor, keep it, sell it because you need to tell your children to stop texting me for money. Wow. And then she proceeded to tell my sister, text my sister. My sister said, why are you bothering her? She doesn't want nothing to do with anybody. She's doing well. Well, I thought you should know. She called your boyfriend and but, 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 but my, my, I said, Jen, give me that phone. And my response was not very ladylike. When we get heated, it can be so hard. I'll say it again. Sell what you stole so you can feed your own kids. My money's mine. Good for you. And look at you now, how you- She can really have, have all the Pradas and Gucci's. And what I'm telling you, I'm not talking about a little amount of money. I'm talking about my life, my whole life. Goodness me. Your book is just going to be so filled. Oh, yeah, because I get to name names. Oh, yeah, and you can. Is yes, that... I can. Oh, my God. Mm. Oh, my goodness. This- this is just like, I could get to part two of this. Well, look, Queen, <laughs> give me your final words that you wish your younger self had known when she was back there in that traumatic experience. What would you tell her? What would you tell that younger girl? What would you, the words you would reach out? Would it be whatever it is from your heart? You might not be the brightest light bulb, but you will always be the most colorful crayon. So beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. Thank you for sharing all this amazing knowledge and all of your stories today. Thank you. For anybody who's a fan of Mob Wives, you just had the queen herself on here, Renee Graziano, my cousin. I am so excited to connect with you again, have yes. Jennifer on, and yes. really like the three of us just like have a great time. Yes.
Can't wait and hopefully go for some massages afterwards. Let's go. I really want to go chill. I love it. You're so wonderful. You're inspirational. You. You're a beautiful soul. I hope you guys have enjoyed today. If you have, share your favorite bit. All you got to do is tag us on Instagram at Natasha Graziano and at Renee Graziano. I'm going to put the tags below and you'll be looking forward to her amazing book, which will be out at some point. She'll come back and talk about it. Stay tuned. I'll see you again next week.